Hello, everyone. So first off, I want to thank also Ash and the AlterConf team for putting this together. And I also want to thank the sponsors and you for giving me your time and attention today. So before I get started, who am I? I'm Alex Rodriguez. You can call me A-Rod. I'm the founder of Gravity, as well as a Code 2040 entrepreneur in residence. And my day-to-day -day job is co-founding a startup called The Workman. So my talk today is on the importance of building diverse <coughs> ecosystems, primarily focused on blacks and Latinos. So blacks and Latinos are among the fastest growing population in the United States, yet we're the least underrepresented community in tech. So why is that an issue? How can we solve that? And why is it a community effort? So to get started, here's a few issues. Blacks and Latinos earn about 18% of computer science degrees, yet we only, only about 9% of us are in tech. So the interest is there, the opportunity is not. Aside from that, a lot of the consumer markets are not being tapped into. A good example of this is Bevel and Blavity. So Bevel is a shaving cream product based in Silicon Valley. And you're probably thinking, cool, a shaving cream product, what's so crazy about that? Well, they actually target the African-American community, and they're one of the fastest growing startups, and they raise about $31 billion, million in less than two years. Blavity is about 18 months in, and they're a content website. And as you all know, we have plenty of content websites these days, but they're also doing very well because they also target the African-American community by giving them a voice among young black millennials. And Probably the craziest statistic of this all is that less than 1% of black and Latino startups are VC funded. Think about that. All the money being invested into startups, only about less than 1% is invested into these blacks and Latino and Latino founders. And this is on a broader scale, and we're actually doing even worse here in the Twin Cities. But that doesn't mean we can't change the ship around. So how do we turn that around? Well, I think we have to focus on the whole pipeline. We gotta start with youth. We gotta expose blacks and Latinos to tech and entrepreneurship early on. We need to have more targeted programs so that they can see what's going on in tech and how to get involved. And then hopefully by the time they get into high school and college, they will have been exposed to tech and entrepreneurship. And here, the big thing you really want to do is show the opportunity. So what's the opportunity in tech? Well, the average tech worker makes double the income of a black and Latina household combined. That's pretty staggering. If you would have told me in high school that I can make double the income of my parents, I know what my major would have been in a heartbeat. <laughs> and then we got to start building a support network among peers that look like them. Colleges should start partnering with high schools. We should start having better programs that target these groups and also make them inc inclusive. This is not just to focus on blacks and Latinos, but we do need to intentionally target them so they can see the opportunities and how to get involved. And so that we can show them there's another route besides being an actor, athlete, or a rapper <laughs> to make it. And then if they go into college, th I think the most important thing in college is really mentorship. We want to mentor the youth. We want to mentor these students so that they have a blueprint for success so they can see that, hey, you know, you can become an engineer and you can work your way up to become a manager and a VP at these tech companies. And you might be thinking, okay, cool. So once we get them in the door, it's done. Wrong. One of the biggest issues right now with tech companies, especially in the Bay Area, is retention. So they, some companies do a good job of getting these engineers, but the culture is really exclusive to them. It doesn't relate to these engineers, to the people from black and Latino, Latina backgrounds. So we got to work on the culture. And I know culture makes and breaks a startup, but that doesn't mean you can't have an inclusive culture. And studies show that if you have a more diverse and inclusive workforce, that leads to better productivity, which leads to more money. And I'm sure we all want to have more money <laughs> as a startup company. So we need to build that culture. We got to learn how to relate to them, what backgrounds do they come from. And then we got to focus on entrepreneurship. And I highlighted entrepreneurship because I think this is really the most important one. Studies show that diverse founders are more likely to build a diverse team. So we need to invest in these entrepreneurs. Now, not every startup needs VC funding, but the, sorry, VC funding. But as I said, less than 1% of them are getting actual money from these companies. 
So we need to invest in these startups. We need to take a risk on them. So if you're a VC, maybe you're thinking, oh, well, there's no good startups. Oh, trust me, there's plenty of good startups founded by blacks and Latino founders. And you can actually talk to me after this conference if you want to know some. So we need to focus on them. And then we need to really guide them. We got to be in it for the long run with them. And we need to show them, you know, how do you get to that Series B, that Series C round? And how do you take the company to the top? And then we also got to focus on the early stage entrepreneurs. Um, you know, show them that there's similar groups and people that look like them and have networking events so that they can build a peer network group and they can support each other. And I do think if we do all of that, we can steer the ship around and really make the Twin Cities one of the most diverse and inclusive workforces for people of color. That concludes my talk. I'm Alex Rodriguez again. Feel free to connect with me afterwards if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, hello. Um, I was wondering if you if you can think of any examples of uh, startups that have have successfully built a welcoming culture. Yeah. Um, just to follow up, like any startups or startups here in the Twin Cities. Uh, I guess now that you mentioned, I'm curious about the Twin Cities, but I guess in general. Yeah, so one startup that does a really good job here in the Twin Cities is a startup called Players Health. Uh, they're pretty early stage, but they're actually one of the most diverse and inclusive teams that I know, and their culture is really welcoming and opening. So you should definitely check out that startup. And then on a larger scale, I know Pinterest does a really good job as well, and they really have a lot of unbiased towards their hiring. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if you might be able to speak to um, thoughts on uh, what people can do to make a more inclusive environment for black and Latino and uh, Latina employees specifically, if there's any like concrete steps that could improve things. No, yeah, definitely. I think that really varies on the startup and what city you're on, or what city you're based in, because it's really different everywhere. But I mean, you really should learn like, where do they come from? Um, you know, what's their backgrounds? What do they relate to? A lot of the sort of stuff that people talk about, like in a day-to-day -day basis during lunch breaks, it's not like what we grew up in. So you know, we're not used to that. Um, a big part of that too is around like masculinity. So one of the biggest issues is that people would do a decent job of increasing blacks and Latinos, but all we're doing is really increasing the male population. We're not helping women get in there. So that's another big one. We, we need to also focus on like, you know, talking about Latino girls, black girls, and stuff like that. Awesome, thank you. Well, yeah, feel free to connect with me afterwards.